Gotcha. Beautiful setting there. Though I'm in the midst of an area that may be rough and tough and sometimes a little crude and rude and may be strange and unusual, you know, God allows us to involve, for instance, like with these plants, tokens of appreciation for His love towards us that we can remind ourselves that God is in control, that God blesses us sometimes with the things that are easy and free like most of our plants that are sitting on this porch my wife and i <laughs> we go to these little 99 cent stores and we buy these little tiny little plants you know they're only like maybe way yay high and then we grow them <laughs> you know the lord blesses and so then it gets bigger and they get bigger and they get bigger and sometimes if we find a special deal you know we might try to get them you know that we can find something that you know is cheap because it's not that my wife and I are, are real cheapskates, but we prefer to spend a certain amount of time and money on other things as opposed to certain things that, you know, we enjoy for ourselves. So when we take the time to invest our funds or finances or that which God has given us, which is not much, but praise the Lord, we've been both abounding and abasing at times where we've been prosperous and poor that we've chosen to take the way that is less traveled so that we could share what we've experienced in life with others in a way that would not isolate us from anyone whether they be poor homeless helpless or full of prosperity and running around you know with diamonds or, or or jewels or rings on their fingers and bells on their toes so they have music wherever they go but God isn't caring so much about your circumstance today as he is about where you are in your heart when it comes time to give an accounting for your life and when God asks of you what have you done with my son then I pray and I hope that you find the day comes that you've known Jesus Christ today and you've heard his voice and you've walked in his way and you've done the things that Jesus said because it's easy to get a comfortable religion that can place you take you and conform you into a place where it's simple to just simply say hey I was this and you could fill in the blank you know you could put in any number of Christian denominations there whether it be Catholic Protestant Methodist Anabaptist Baptist Greek Orthodox Roman Catholic, oh boy, we could go on, fundamentalist, Pentecostal, Methodist, and you just work your way down, you, you know, all kinds of denominations that at one time, maybe they were like on fire for God, you know, and they knew Jesus, but maybe some of them have gone a little astray, or have gone less involved, or have lost their first love, or whatever it may be the circumstances that cause people to participate in it without being a part of it anymore with God. But they've chosen to be comfortable to see God as a distant, faraway object of whom they're trying to get to. And they may love the idea of God. But the sad part is, is do they know God? And so not all that is Christian knows Jesus. Not all that is Christ-like with good works has a relationship with the personal God. Not all that glitters is gold, so to speak, but that each person one-on-one, -on one to one to one to one to one to one to one, God works with individually and he brings them corporately together in his spirit to be one in the spirit one in the lord and the love if you have love for the brethren is what brings us together in one body of christ not one church because there's seven churches in heaven so you might as well forget about one church you're not the one true church you may be one seventh of it <laughs> which if you look at the letters to the seven churches I hate to say it, but there's some pretty radical, weird kind of churches there. You know, some of them are good, some of them are bad, some of them are kind of like mixed up, and some of them don't even know which way they're going. 
yet God is in the midst of them and he tells them what to do. But there's no one true church. There is one God. There is one Lord. There is one bride and one bridegroom and you're being woven into the garment that the bride wears. You are becoming a part of this bigger picture that God has created you to be a part of with your gifts, abilities, talents, personality, individually quirkiness to become a part of the body of Christ that becomes the bride that is going to be taken from this world soon. But in the meantime, we have things that God tells us to do. He's spoken, he said, and sometimes the church helps us to go in that direction. But the church is meant to instruct us, to encourage us, to exhort us, to prepare us, to train us, so that we could go out and share Jesus. So don't be stuck in a pew if you don't know what to do. Sit still, open up your Bible, open up your devotional, and today, ask God what he would have you to do. You may find yourself surprised. He might answer you. In God Calling, Eternal Life. Oh Jesus, we love thee so and long to serve you. My children, you are to do mighty things for me. Glorious and wonders unfold. Life is one glorious completeness. Draw into your beings more and more this wonderful eternal life. It is the flow of life eternal through spirit, through mind, through body, through soul, from me, that cleanses, heals, restores, renews you, and passes on from you to others with the same miracle, miraculous, working power that raised Jesus from the dead. And this is life eternal, that they might know you and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So seek by constant contact to know me more and more. Make me the one abiding presence in your day of which you are conscious of all the time. Seek to do less, but to accomplish more, to achieve more, to be more. Doing is action. Achievement is successful action. Remember that eternal life is the only lasting life. So that all that is done without being done in the power of my spirit, my life, is passing away. All done in the spiritual life is undying. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So eternal life also means security. It means safety. Dwell increasingly in the consciousness of that security, that safety of who I am. When Jesus gave us eternal life, you know, people play these theological games of once saved, always saved, which if you ever see it, you'll see this OSAS. And then you get these Calvinists, and you get these Arminianists, and you get these dispensationalists, and you get these religionists, and you get these definitions, and you get all this kind of theological premise that all bases itself upon the same idea that Jews already argued about and debated about and discussed about and created all these little formulas and what's called drash or interpretations to get it all segmented and put into a box so that they could figure out that salvation was only for the Jew. And in reality, Jesus came and said, uh-uh, sorry, that's not true. And then now we have the opposite extreme where sometimes we get religious people working on this whole idea of what God has provided for us in the way of salvation. And so create all these terminologies just like Jewish people did and they got God in a box again. So God says, uh-uh, sorry. And he moves outside of the box always to accomplish his purpose. So it's not that God is universal in the sense of creating we're all going to get there but he's universal in the sense of one thing he will accomplish his will and he will give salvation to whom he chooses no man knows who has salvation i don't know if you're saved i don't know who is saved i know this <laughs> jesus knows so i am given confidence by my knowledge of the relationship that i have with god 
I'm not giving confidence in some word that I have to name it, claim it, and make it famous. <laughs> you don't famous it in your life. You don't claim it in your life. You don't make it somehow a reality without God saying to you personally, my child, I love you. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. They won't follow the voice of another. You know, sometimes we need to get over the religious talk and get back to the reality the realism of what Jesus said. The realism is, hey, if you want to hear me, I said you could hear my voice. So start simple and work on it. But start with Jesus and end it with Jesus. And you'll find that Jesus will reveal to you who he is, what he is, and he's going to do something else, which is really kind of cool if you think about it. He's going to introduce you to his Father in heaven. And he's going to say, I want you to know my Father in heaven as I know my Father in heaven. And I want you to be one with my Father in heaven as I am with my Father in heaven. Because, didn't he say so? It's a joy when you just let go and let Jesus lead. But if you want to go some religious route, eventually, or straight up, you'll find yourself there. But I hope that you find that Jesus cares about you and wants you to be discovering that his yoke is easy and his burden is light and he's calling to you today to take up your cross and follow him in a simple way. <laughs> Don't make it more complicated than it is because God is here, God is near, and God will be with you if you just ask him into your life. Thank <laughs> you.